crumbling I'll keep doubling You keep bluffing You've got nothing I'll keep hustling Hey agents, a few weeks ago I made a quick video on using the Bighorn in PvP. I also said that I'd make a full build video if I got 50 likes. Well, here we are, and I'd like to thank you all for checking out the video, hitting the like button, and supporting this channel. I really do appreciate it. So, enough of that show of emotion, I actually decided to make this video not just about one build, but about the Bighorn in general in both PvP and PvE. But since I'm sure some of you are here just to see the build from the previous video, let's get to that right away. At first glance, this build looks just like any of my system corruption builds with Intimidate and Adrenaline Rush, but for this build, all the rolls are headshot damage and I've also got handling on the backpack and chest piece. Because the Bighorn has a couple of issues. First off, the mods are useless for a crit build. They give 10% accuracy, stability, and reload speed, and 30% headshot damage. Second problem is the recoil is rough. Taking a look here, this is the recoil pattern with no stability aside from the 10% from my watch. The jump on the second bullet is wild and then the pull after that is really bad too. But if we use the Sharpshooter Specialization, personally, I use this on all my big horn builds, which gives us 15% stability, plus two handling rolls, the recoil is already significantly better. Then, if you use a high-end build and give it four handling rolls, it's actually not bad at all. And the great thing about headshot builds is that you only need to run headshot damage as opposed to both damage and chance on a crit build. So you can throw whatever you want on that second attribute. Hazard protection, armor regen, handling, whatever your build needs. The problems with headshot builds are, for starters, they are really hard to use. Let's face it, it's not easy to hit headshots on moving targets. So this build is high risk high reward. Another issue is that the hitbox for headshots from behind the target is kinda small. So this is not a great build for sneaking up on someone or flanking. You can see here I have no problem hitting headshots on the first two targets that are facing me, but the last guy who's running away, I can't hit his head to save my life. And with this build, no headshot, no damage. So going back to the build, I actually started using it with three blues, but then I switched to four and realized it still hits super hard, even with 1.5 million armor. So you can test yourself, I'd say 1.3, 1.5, maybe even 1.7 would still shred if you have the right pieces. And as I mentioned earlier, every piece has headshot damage rolled onto it then the chest and the backpack have headshot and handling. Intimidate is so good with system corruption because with your hack step protocol, you get 35% amplified damage for a lot longer than with just adrenaline rush. On the backpack, 
You could also run the Matador for the extra 2% bonus armor or 3% in PvE, but I'd only use that if you have a Providence or Walker Harris chest piece with the right rolls as well. For skills, almost necessary for system corruption is a booster hive because you have no normal medkits. Then I run either a scanner pulse or a jammer pulse. Of course, a shield would also be good here too. For the stats, you have just the basic 10% crit chance and 55% crit damage, but you've got 210% headshot damage. And of course, that's not including the headshot damage boost you get from Big Game Hunter. Speaking of which, this is an absolutely amazing talent. It has two parts, and the first is kind of underwhelming, at least in PvP. You can scope him, and the gun becomes a single fire rifle, gaining 450% weapon damage. The rate of fire though, is too slow for such low damage, at least on this build. If you just need a little damage on an enemy who's far away, sure, it'll do. But otherwise, it's just kinda gimmicky. The second part though, 2% headshot damage per headshot, stacking up to 50 times. So at max stacks, you get 100% headshot damage, which is insane. Add that to your base 210, and now you've got 310% headshot damage on an assault rifle. And the only way you can lose these stacks is by one, reaching full stacks, at which point they slowly start to decay, or two, by swapping weapons. In Conflict and PvE, you don't even lose your stacks when you die, as you can see here. But, in the DZ, for whatever reason, you do lose your stacks on death. So to recap, this first build, System Corruption with Intimidate is godly because of Hackstep Protocol. You want to face tank enemies at close range, and you absolutely must hit headshots. If you do, you'll be able to shred tanks even with 1.5 million armor. Now, I know a lot of you are not fans of system corruption or just don't have the pieces, so I also put together a high-end build that works more or less the same. Again, it looks like a standard meta build, but of course we have headshot damage rolled onto everything, and personally, I run it with four handling rolls because honestly, this build already hits extremely hard, so throwing on a little bit of extra crit won't do much. Plus, more hits equals more damage. Breaking it down, you have two pieces of Walker Harris for 5% damage to armor, one piece Providence for headshot damage, Fenris for AR damage, and then Contractor's Gloves and Fox's Prayer Knee Pads. So on top of all the headshot damage, we're also getting multiple sources of multiplicative damage. I put Unbreakable on this build instead of Intimidate because Unbreakable is just such a powerful talent, it's hard to pass up on. I only run Intimidate on the System Corruption build because the bonus armor we get from Hackstep Protocol activates Intimidate for much longer. But this build also does use Adrenaline Rush because it is a close range build so you'll constantly be getting the 10% bonus armor for being within 10 meters of an enemy. This build plays basically the same as the System Corruption build, but instead of Hackstep Protocol, you'll probably want a shield as one of your skills for the extra survivability. You can run it with 3 to 5 blues, it just depends on the gear you have. Finally, let's take a look at the Bighorn in PvE. In all honesty, headshot builds are not great in PvE because there are so many enemies with helmets and they don't take headshot damage until you break it. The good thing is though, that you can still build up stacks on helmets even before you've broken them. The way I run this build probably seems a bit counterintuitive because I run the Bighorn, which is obviously an assault rifle, with Hunter's Fury, which is generally viewed as an SMG or shotgun build. But honestly, losing that 15% shotgun and SMG damage is not a game breaker just because this build is already so strong. It gives you everything you need in PvE. Lots of amplified damage and lots of survivability. Then, using Memento adds even more damage and survivability. 
Plus, it gives you bonus armor, allowing you to constantly proc Intimidate, and putting up your shield will protect that extra 35% amplified damage. So looking at the stats, you'll see I have 138% crit damage, but only 26% crit chance. Yes, I know the crit chance is capped at 60%, but the trick is the orbit. This sidearm gives you 35% crit chance and 40% crit damage for 10 seconds after swapping from it within 10 seconds of a kill. So, before engaging a room, I pull out my orbit, find a red enemy, down him, swap to my bighorn, and now I'm at 60% crit chance 178% crit damage, and a bunch of headshot damage to boot. So after your perfect finisher expires in 10 seconds, you can either swap back for another boost, or just roll with your headshot damage, which is probably close to 200% by now. Just remember that swapping from your bighorn will remove your stacks. So if you're at like 40 stacks, you probably don't want to swap to your sidearm just yet. And, I also have one handling roll on this build, because it's PvE, I figured I didn't need more than the 8%, but that's personal preference. You might not need any handling at all, or you might want to put a few rolls onto this build. For some of you, this build might seem like a hassle, and that's fine, stick to old reliable. But, for those looking for something new, trust me, this build is extremely strong and very fun. It hits like a truck when used correctly and the survivability makes you near unkillable. Especially when playing solo, which is where Memento and Hunter's Fury threat. So that's it guys. This is how I've been playing the Bighorn recently. And to be honest, after using headshot builds for a while, it's hard to go back to crit builds just because running headshot damage is so much more powerful than crit if you can hit your headshots. Of course, there are times where I miss too many shots and get outgunned, but at least I know that's on me, not my build. So go ahead and challenge yourself. Try a new build and move out of your comfort zone, at least until the big new update arrives. As usual, thanks for watching, I hope this video was helpful, and until next time, happy farming.